Thank you, Ms. Ferguson. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, good morning. I thank you for joining us today and for being with us during the last few days. As you are aware, a search and rescue operation was activated on Wednesday, the 6th of December, 2023 to locate and rescue all aboard on one of our helicopters. This operation concluded yesterday, Friday, the 8th of December, with the extraction of the survivors and the bodies of those who perished. While we would have held one press conference and provided periodic updates via our social media platform, we have convened this press briefing to update you and the public on what we know and have gathered over the past three days. With me here this morning are my Colonel General of Staff, Colonel Ken Lloyd Roberts, uh, my Adjutant General, Colonel Lorraine Foster, Commanding Officer of our Air Corps, Lieutenant Colonel Mohinda Ramjag, Force Medical Officer, Lieutenant Colonel Nigel Longhorn, my Special Duty Officer, Lieutenant Colonel Selwyn Austin, and the Force Operations Officer, Lieutenant Colonel Andy Pompey. Allow me this moment, first of all, to express and announce our sincere condolences to the families and relatives of our servicemen. Brigadier Gary Beaton, Colonel Michael Shahood, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Charles, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Welcome, and Staff Sergeant Jason Khan. While this tragedy of the incident has hit us hard, these men, our men who have perished, expect us to regroup and prepare to continue with the mission of protecting our country. This is the life of the military. We join, we train, and we live to serve selflessly. And we do so even after we would have served. We will honor the sacrifices of our officers and other rank who have perished in this incident. I wish to also extend thanks to all those who assisted, support, and were involved in this operation. From our special forces, pilots, medical personnel, our own national security advisor, the team from Omni Helicopters, and our partners at RSS, and also you, the media. This search and rescue operation in the face of several challenges, including the weather conditions, was successfully completed because of all of those persons I have mentioned. I particularly noted within the media not only your appetite for information, but equally also your vigilance to correct those who were posting and sharing false information. This added to the success of this operation. We are truly thankful to all of you. In the days ahead, we will announce our plans in collaboration with the families 
what will be the program activities relating to the funeral and other arrangements. As mentioned before by Ms. Ferguson, we'll give an outline of the operations and my officers here will continue with that. On Wednesday, December 6th, 2023, one of, my, one of the Danny Prince Force Bell 412 EPI helicopter departed from a, a company Ghana on a mission. Now, the intent of this mission was to put Arrow, and if you recall, recently a flag was erected here to reaffirm our territorial integrity, demarcate our western uh, boundary. The flight departed the company in Ghana at 0924, all time in zero local, 0924 for a title stop at Holly Creek. The flight is shown there, in Ghana, the blue arrows to Holly Creek, a distance of, of approximately 144 miles. The aircraft got there at 1037. If you do the maths, that's a lapse time of approximately an hour and 13 minutes. The aircraft stopped there, refueled, and at 10 58 hours, departed on the creek for Arrow. Now, if you know there, the flight route or the intended flight route is shown in dashed yellow. That distance is approximately 58 miles. If you are familiar with the way pilots fly, um, the ideal route is a direct route. Thing. However, on this day, the pilot deviated to the right or to the north. And that could be for many reasons. Right. Deviated, and while contact was lost with the aircraft in the vicinity of the Blake Slater the Air Dome. The red, um, Icon there shows that location. That location is a distance of 38 miles from Wallace Creek to the site. On receipt of this signal, uh, ELT stands for Emergency Locally Transmitter that was received as the time shown here, 11.19. And that signal is automatically triggered um, when the aircraft is, is subjected to extreme G-forces. Um, on the initiation of that signal, or the receipt of that signal, uh, the sort of rescue operation was launched. The actions initi uh, were initiated. That includes um, activation of our response capability, the establishment of a uh, rescue uh, coordination center at the Tamiri Control Tower, uh, that includes members of the Guyan Defense Force, mainly from the Air Corps, members of the Guyan Civil Aviation Authority, and other agencies to establish, um, or establish the operational flow to seek and uh, establish the very support of the aircraft. At this juncture, I will pause and I'll ask the Staff Officer 1 General 3 to provide some more operational details. I will come back and give you some more insight into the actual search and rescue. It's going to copy. Mm -hmm. Morning. On Wednesday, helicopter in Romeo Alpha Yankee Alpha departed base camp in Ghana. And the mission of that flight was a command visit take a small resupply of Russia to the troops on our locations. The locations were Arrow, Makapa, and location Etrimba. And that said they at approximately 1120 hours we received a signal from the emergency locator transmitter. Upon verification the Special Forces Launch a Search and Rescue Operation. 
And while they were at Lake Slater Airstrip in Region 7, on two attempts, they failed to reach the crash site because of the bad weather. And on Wednesday, the operation was suspended. The operation resumed on Thursday morning. And again, after two attempts, we were able to insert one of the team 0.8 miles away from the crash site, after which we inserted two rescuers with a Omni helicopter. They were inserted with medics and also rationed for the survivors. And as we attempted to extract them on Thursday, Bagwood again prevailed. So the rescue team and the rescuers spend the night at the crash site with the two survivors and the deceased. On Friday, we were able to continue the mission, even though we had bad weather, and we extracted two survivors for us, the five deceased, the rescue team, all of which were extracted via the GDF helicopter, the Romeo might be the Alpha, via winch. They were all winched out of the crash site, flown to Blake Theater Airstrip, and then transported to Georgetown with the GDF Islander and Skyvan. Presently, we have a rescue team at Blake Slater who will be extracted today. This operation encompasses three road wing aircraft, three helicopters, and seven fixed width, total of 10. And uh, we had assistance from the regional security system, Omni helicopters, Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, uh, Air Services Limited, Trans Guyana, the Ministry of Health, in particular the Georgetown Public Hospital Cooperation, and uh, a rescue coordination center was established in Tumiri that assisted in the coordination of the rescue effort. In total, approximately 60 persons through various agencies coordinated this operation. So we were able to bring home the survivors and the deceased. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Nigel Langhorn, the Force Medical Officer, Guyana Defense Force. Now, to support this operation, on Thursday, the medical team was inserted into the general area of operation. We established a staging area at the Flake Slater Airstrip. Now, this team was uh, comprised of myself, uh, Dr. Isan Reed, who's a major in the Gan Defense Force as well, Dr. Ivor Semple, along with three medics, namely uh, Medic Cebola, Medic uh, Mori, and Daniels. Now, upon arrival at the location, two of our Special Forces medics were inserted into the area close to the crash site, as indicated by uh, the entry. And they spent the night there with the survivors. They were able to give us um, real-time well, information or updates as it relates to the health status of the survivors. And of course, provide first aid and other general support to, to the survivors. Now, on the following day, that is um, yesterday, we were able to extract the survivors and further assessment was done at the Slater Airstrip where we were um, located, and they were then transported to Ogle um, Airdrome. Now, all of this um, would have been done with the support by the staff of the Georgian Public uh, Hostel Corporation, namely Dr. Box from the ER department. We had Dr. Rahman, that was um, assisting, and Dr. Mahendra Carpen, who's also a reserve um, military um, officer. Now, as it relates to the status of the survivors, from the inception, we, we, we had a, there was indication that they were in good general um, condition. However, upon um, 
for an examination, namely at Georgetown Public um, Hospital. We were able to confirm their, you know, what is actually going on with them. And I'm happy to report that there was no um, injury of significance as per se. They're all in good general um, condition. I had a visit um, this morning, and by then they were able to fully examine all of the scans and so forth. I had a visit um, and a talk with the survivors this morning, and they're all in um, good spirits. Their families are alongside them, supporting them as well. What I would attempt to do here is to give some more details into the actual search and rescue. There are lots of speculations, assumptions, and I wish to clarify that. I hope at the end of this, I will succeed somewhat. Now, if you recall my earlier brief, I mentioned that the ELT signal was received by the very control center, the 19. Immediately, as the command officer here, Corps was notified, I informed my chief of staff, my coordinator of staff, and also directly the director general for the civil division. Department. The sky van was at Timiri and that was prepped to commence search and insert a uh, search team. Now I must say in aviation, whenever there's a distress signal or the report is received, the four prong approach. Right. Locate, you assess, insert, and extract. And that exactly what was done. The Skyhorn was dispatched. I myself um, took command of the aircraft along with my team in support of my fight operation. And we got to base later around 40 minutes after. You may ask why, but where as, as later uh, was bad, prevailing weather condition, prevented and already dispatched. However, an aircraft was at Arshing Airship in the Coyote Marzuni just off of Holly Creek, and that was dispatched. Captain Orlando Charles, I wish to express thanks and gratitude for his expeditious response. He did that, and he got a board at 11.30. He went overhead, but because of bad weather again, he could not come down. The elevation of the cross side is 3,000 feet. He cannot get him. Skyman got here, and immediately, um, in route, I attempted to do a uh, survey. Again, I couldn't get down because of low blood coverage. I want to illustrate that. We can see this is a topographical map to give you an idea of the topography of the terrain. If you understand our geography, you can see the contour lines there, where the cross site is. You see here is the escarpment face in the Marjoni. Who, who understand the country's geography? We have the escarpment in the Marjoni that runs all the way from the Ethereum Mangario down into Mario, a sheer rock face with numerous mountains called the Bacarinas. The contours at the cross side are very steep. Very close, I indicate a very steep rise. Skyvan did a survey here. I want to show you the weather. Yes. What you see in there, um, where the helicopter is, that is the west side of the escarpment. Where the clouds are, that's the east side, and the clouds are just on the face. Another illustration, that's the gate. We cannot, couldn't, we couldn't go down, because you can't go down if you can't see. Right. Go on in this, you said the first um, mission of the rescue is to you know, preserve itself. Right. During the attempt to locate um, the site or to examine the site um, on the day, when the sky even got overhead, you couldn't go down. So a landing was made. Um, at Lake Slater. 
the troops uh, they were put off and again myself and two of my officers we boarded a trans aircraft and the service commenced for 30 minutes right again by weather uh, for that day for the entire day almost you know uh, look a coverage prevented us from getting low to make a, a careful or keen assessment. Um, so our attempt to get low to locate the site was not successful. Um, the helicopter uh, was asked to uh, flown in because of time and space and the lateness. Um, that was not done. The following day, Thursday, the helicopter was flown in. Skyvan again uh, was flown in along with the other private sector aircraft, your service of trans -Guiana. And again, I want to extend profound gratitude and appreciation to these operators, trans -Guiana, your services, and Captain Orlando Charles. And also for trans -Guiana, they hosted us at the big state club. It's a private air drone, and they were very hospitable, thanks to trans -Guiana. Fortunately, on Thursday, the weather was a bit more cooperative. And the service commenced as early as sunrise by Captain Charles. He's based in Arashima, so he was able to dispatch early. Along with the Skyvan, we got there. The Skyvan and the Islander, the Islander joined the search. And we searched. The Belfort 12 came in. And being a Belfort 12 a helicopter, he can do a more probing search. That was done. And thanks to my, my operation manager, Lieutenant Colonel Wicks, the pilot command of that helicopter, they located the cross site. Okay. Not an easy feat. It's a nail in a haystack because of these trees are massive and across we know it's quite tiny. That was done and during his flyby, he recognized your personnel waving. So we intensified our effort that was with everybody. Mm -hmm. I had to push. We came back and the search team was inserted. Right. And that was a very intricate and delicate mission. I was there myself, and you have, we had our blade spitting mere inches from trees. That was done. Seven personnel were in circuit, and they made an assessment. But that was established, and they were, I must say, they were in circuit 0.8 miles from the site. We couldn't go closer because of numerous limitations, uh, limited factors. They trekked from that point where they were in circuit to cross site, and they made an assessment and gave us an update. Thanks. Thanks, Thereafter, we mm. attempted again to do the recovery, but again, bad weather prevented that. Yesterday um, was much better, and the mission to recover the, the survivors and the BCs, um, that was successful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There is a phase now we are going into, which is the investigation phase. And that is outside of the remit, remit of the Ghana Defense Force. We will now have the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority along with the Guyana Police Force will conduct their investigation. Because we are part of this operation, we will have to provide the information to those investigators. The process has already started. We have handed over a number of items to the Civil Aviation Authority and the police also um, has commenced their investigation. For this particular press conference, we will only state what we know. And I would request that we wait on that investigation to be completed. In this period, I want to remind that we have an imminent threat to our territory. And this particular uh, flight to the border with a command uh, mission to visit our troops, not only Arau, but also Itaringbang and Makapo. I cannot express how sudden we are that these officers sacrifice service, their lives, in giving what this force has been doing for the past 58 years to this nation. We are doing what our predecessors would have done and we will continue to do this. To protect Guyana, 
and to protect the people of Guyana. I thank you for being here this morning. Travis Chase, we'll start with Travis Chase, please. And then Mr. Chabral. Morning, Travis Chase, HGP 19 News. Um, can you say if Black Slater, I believe this is the Kevin? Black Slater. Black Slater, is that the Kevin, right? Is it a uh, government or a privately owned district? One, two. You said that uh, OMI helicopter assisted in the Amen. Who owns that helicopter? All right, I'll ask the CEO. Uh, respond to the first question. Blake Slater um, is a privately owned airstrip by Transgen. And, and that's five miles from the cross site. Omni is, uh, is a Canadian owned company conducting operations for Exxon Mobile. Thank you. Uh, Brigadier Daniel Chabral, Governor of Sir, could you say uh, whether the survivors have been briefed, that's one, and have they been able to say why? your crowd diverted from the uh, prescribed route. And secondly, um, to, um, through you to uh, Mr. Ramjad, uh, to what extent can the navigational aids uh, aid the pilot to ascertain whether he was coming up close to the escarpment? I understand it's a very sophisticated helicopter. Can the aids provide any guidance to the pilot in this regard? So he could have taken um, evasive action? Let me, let me, let me um, thank you for that question, um, Ms. Chabral. Um, for the first one, um, we wanted to have the examination, the medical examination um, of the survivors done for us as a priority. Um, the debriefing of those um, two survivors will be done by the investigators. Um, you will have a further update on that as the investigation unfold. On the second one, um, so. Yes, um, to answer the second question, in my opening um, brief, my first brief, <coughs> uh, the helicopter is the Bell 412 EPI. EPI means for um, Enhanced Performance Integrated Electronics. Yes, it's a very advanced uh, helicopter made by Bell. And they are flight instruments or instrumentation to aid pilots. I don't want to speak at this time, but the aircraft is equipped with what you call a CVFDR, a cockpit voice flight, flight data recorder. That will capture all voice uh, communication and also flight data um, details, or the airspeed, altitude, etc. Uh, when that is examined, uh, the question that you ask uh, will be answered. But uh, you didn't, I don't think you can answer the question, can it aid in identifying any obstructions, my layman language, such as the escarpment, to alert the pilot to take you Yes, action? there are devi um, devices called TOS, terrain radius warning systems, and so forth. Um, these um, aids or devices, um, the aircraft is still equipped to them, yes. Okay, we'll have the reporter from CCN TV6 out of Trinidad, sir. I could do it, Mark Um Just going back, when the helicopter landed at uh, Olive Creek. Was there any communication at that time with the, uh, the base or with um, the, the headquarters as a, a conversation perhaps of hesitation uh, to, to go on because what, what was the weather like there and was there a con conversation at that time in terms of communication with the, the pilot and so on? I thank, thank you for that question, Mr. Prasad. Um, I would say um, we will have to investigate, find out what was done in details, and provide the same to the investigators. I would want to say at this point in time, um, while I respect the desire to have all of these information, we want to speak to the right people. We want to talk to the people who are on the ground, the survivors. So we cannot pronounce on that right now. I prefer the investigators to go to the people who are operating in the aircraft, the survivors, for example, so we'll have that information. What was the weather like at Olive Creek prior to their leaving there to go to Arrow and so on? Well, I, I believe uh, Lieutenant Colonel Ramjag would have mentioned that circling that the land an hour after would have been um, not good. 
that prevented his landing. Mr. Mosley and then Ms. Johnson. Gordon Mosley, new source. Uh, Brigadier, uh, could you confirm, one, uh, that based on the assessment so far, that the back of that uh, aircraft might have hit a mountain or some other encumbrance in that area? And uh, could you also say whether there are protocols uh, for the operation of this type of aircraft in bad weather? Because based on uh, what we've heard so far, the rescue teams couldn't get in 45 minutes later because of that bad weather. So can you say if there are protocols uh, regarding that? And finally, sir, uh, could you say the fuel, uh, the refueling of the aircraft at Olive Creek, it is, could you say where's that fuel supplied from? Is it from Guyana, is it bought from bordering locations? Where's that fuel supplied from in that area? Right, to your first question again, that will come out in the investigation. Um, but I will tell you the experience of actually reading the reports coming out on the weather um, condition, it's, it's, it's interesting how in the next five minutes the weather can change or the visibility can change. So we had to be flying in the area every now and then to see what is happening, if there's an opening. And this is what we had to operate in. We don't want to rescue the lives of the rescue are going in. Um, we want to have that clear visibility to ensure that we go and successfully extract those persons. Um, the one on the fuel, I cannot answer that. Yeah. If I may, um, just to reinforce my chief of staff um, answer to weather, weather is very uh, dynamic. In our operating environment, uh, because of steering mm -hmm. and other um, features, steering features, it changes so, so often. Um, we had aircraft um, that, was, um, that was launched aloft just to probe weather to ensure that there's an opening so we could dispatch the, the helicopter timely to conduct that search mission. At Olive Creek, um, when the helicopter landed that morning, it was good, right? But you can see where this changes so often because of terrain, uh, wind factors, temperatures, dew point, all these conditions. Olive Creek, with regards to that question, um, that's a transgen um, off station, uh, off base, and the fuel there um, is being delivered, uh, delivered from bowsers. And that's, a, that's a, an audit process or a system that is well managed and um, supervised right, to ensure that the fuel is sanitized. But, but Colonel, um, I would say leave that for, for um, the management to answer that question that you, you asked. Yes. Chief of Staff Julie Johnson Prime News, I have three questions for you. Um, you spoke about the two investigations by, or the investigation by the police and the... Civil and Aviation Siege. Authority. What about your own board of inquiry, which automatically commence when um, army personnel are involved in an incident or an accident. That's one. Two, could you say through maybe uh, Colonel Jagnan, what was the payload at the time of leaving Olive Creek? Um, we've had several aircrafts in that area crash. Blake Slater was one of them. Um, could you say what was the pay payload and if um, the addition of fuel may have impacted anything at all in that in accident. And the third, um, what about an external explosion that may, that could have caused that crash? Anything of that sort from your people? Yeah. Good questions. Um, I will tell you, the Colonel General Staff, we already convened a uh, board to be done internally with our own protocols. Certainly this incident has resulted in a loss of lives and we want to know why also within our own system so a board of inquiry will will be done um for your other two questions uh okay. yes. um, when you got the payload no um if you recall uh, the if crew um comprised of three persons two pilots in the cabin crew and four passengers and this aircraft uh, max takeoff which is 11,900 pounds um, we're way below our max take off with on this flight. Um, the other question, the CD, the CB, CBR, um, when that is analyzed, um, the question you actually be answered. Sharda, newsroom. Brigadier, good morning. Sharda Bacchus from the newsroom. Could you say at this point in, in time if there is any preliminary 
information as to what might have caused the accident. And secondly, uh, is there like one individual that was assigned to head the investigation? If yes, could you say who that person is? Which which an investigation you're talking about? The investigation into the accident. Well, well, we have we have the I don't know um, the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority has their own system. The Guyana Police Force will have their own system, and our internal inquiry will have its own system. So it's safe to say that there are three investigations into the accident. We will have an internal um, um, inquiry in our own protocols. That's a standard operation procedure for any event that occurred in the, in the Ghana Defense Force. When there's a loss of lives and also the involvement of machinery like um, and equipment like an aircraft, we don't have the expertise. And you have that governing national body that is responsible for those investigations. And the first question, please. Um, forgive me. What was in the cause? Any preliminary information at this point as to what might have no. caused the accident? No, we, we don't have that. Um, we prefer to wait on the investigation to be completed. If there are no other questions, I'll have Travis again and then yeah. Mr. Shabon. Uh, oh. Sir, since, since you um, talk about uh, charter acts, about preliminary investigation, mm -hmm. how or if do you plan to extract the aircraft? Yes. Um, this will be advised later on on the investigation as it unfolds. But do you plan to? It will be advised. It will be advised. Mr. Brock? Good. Um, but you're After Shabon, the Just a follow up, please. Mm. Could you at least say then what is the state of the aircraft? You want to pronounce it? The aircraft is. Um, but they weren't. Uh, there are a few remaining parts from, um, I was not on the actual site, but from report received. Where was most of the bone concentrated? Which part of the uh, Primarily the, the fuselage area, meaning the body of the aircraft. Okay. Sir, uh, uh, yesterday at a rally in uh, Caracas, <laughs> the Venezuelan president, the Venezuelan <laughs> president said to his people that this was a mission to lower some Venezuelan flag that was raised in the bordering locations. Do you wish to respond uh, to that statement from him? And secondly, sir, I know you said the uh, survivors uh, will be fully debriefed after their medical care and all of that. But they spent a night in the jungle with a medical team, with special forces. They must have said something. Uh, do, do, is there a preliminary report from them on what might have happened? And could you say, based on what we've seen so far in terms of the evidence, what it shows that any of the uh, officers, the members on board of the aircraft, jumped as it was spiraling uh, down to the ground. Again, um, Mr. Mosley, th thank you for your questions. Very important. We don't have those details, and I don't want to give you any information that I don't know. I want the investigators to complete this investigation. As much as you are concerned, the Ghana Defense Force is concerned. We do not want something like this to happen again. Sir, this is important for us. Um, on the issue of what uh, President Maduro will say, there's a lot of things coming out from that. I don't want to comment on that. Um, and but do you I would say, that? I would say, they spell he said something. That, no, that he said, it was a mission to lower a Venezuelan flag that was raised in an area. We had a command visit to the border. A command visit means that we are going to visit our soldiers. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving shortly to visit my troops. The mission continues. The mission continues. What I am was going. It to lower a flag. <coughs> No, there's no there's no Venezuelan flag on our border. None. None. Last week, if I should tell you, I, I had a meeting with uh, the village captain for Maro. Very pleasant individual and one of his counselors. When that information came out that there was a raise or a lowering of our flag, and we were able to communicate to the village that that, that is not so. There's so many things going on on social media, and I know we have to be timely in how we respond. But verifying this information, who said what, 
and what they said will give us some time before we could respond. And I want the media uh, body to understand that. We're happy to get your information. We are very happy. And you're actually our eyes and ears. You have a bigger and a larger network than us um, in many spheres. So we're happy to have that information from you, but you have to give us some time to respond. We have to verify. But in that particular instance, nothing like that has occurred. I'll take one question. Um, I, 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 did one. Did I, did I did not get to ask my question. I did not get to ask my question. We have some people who didn't get a chance to ask any question. Could we have that young lady in the back? Hi, Mia Anthony from Scrapper News. Um, I have three questions. The U.S. Southern Command announced overflights of land on Thursday. Are these continuing, and can you say how many aircrafts were involved and the types? Has there been a buildup of Venezuelan troops along any part of the frontier of Guyana? And have you had any discussions with the regional security system on invoking the common defense article if that was necessary? Thank you for those questions. Um, very important. I will tell you there are a number of things that we are doing. And we are partnering with our uh, uh, several nations that share the same values that we share, democratic, um, that connect us and how we can collaborate, where peace and stability of this region um, is, our, is our aim. Um, I will not be able to go, in, go into uh, um, the details of that collaboration at this point in time. Thank you for those questions. Mr. Khan, could you confirm um, that yourself and another senior officer were supposed to be on that flight uh, on Wednesday? There are several flights. The Thank flight, you for that question. The flight that crashed on yeah. Wednesday. There are several <coughs> flights that are going into our locations. And we have, um, for example, the two days before Colonel Roberts was in, um, we had three other flights program, and we had to reschedule. I'm not too sure what you're asking. I'm asking if you yeah. were to be on that flight that left. Are you scheduled to be on that? I am scheduled to go in any flight. Were you scheduled every to flight. leave on that particular flight on Wednesday that crashed Mr. Khan? The flight on Wednesday, we were meant to go in. The flight on Tuesday, I was meant to go in. The flight on Friday, I was meant to go in. And the flight today, I meant to go in, which I will be going in. So is the GDF yeah. rethinking how its senior uh, staff and senior officers go out on these missions? Because they understand that the head of national intelligence was part of this rescue mission at a time like this, uh, repelling them into the jungle. Can you confirm that and whether that is something uh, that you would want now at this time when there are other officers who can do that work? Why is the head of national intelligence out there doing that? Mr. Mosley, I will say our force is very versatile. We have different skill sets and we want to pull the best that we have that could contribute to any mission success. So this particular mission, we did just that. And there are many others who were part of this operation. Is it a breach of aviation regulation to switch seats if you stop to refuel an aircraft? It that will come out in the investigation. But is it a breach? Do you know if it's a breach? You know. I don't know. You don't know? So can you answer that, sir? Do you know if it's a breach of regulation to switch seats? I don't know um, um, the question we get in that, but... Um, the question is... Passengers, when the aircraft is loaded, you confirm to let's, us. Let's, let's, let's wait on the investigation again. I respect the appetite for information, but allow us to have the real investigators provide these questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.